be strong in the Lord because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Joseph was a young man who was strong where it mattered. He was strong in the Lord, strong in faith, and strong in virtue. And that made him able to survive in a hostile environment. And I'm glad today that I don't have to have a physique like Arnold Schwarzenegger to survive because it's not your physique that matters, it's your faith. I said it's your faith. And that's why you hear the prophet saying, they that wait on the law shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Because they trust in the Lord and they've learned to lean upon him. It's not the strong in physique, but it's the strong in faith that will actually survive. In the text, Jacob says, my blessings have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors. He's talking about Abraham. He's talking about Isaac, his father and his grandfather. And he says to Joseph, your blessings shall be greater than my blessings. You will have blessings that are boundless blessings. Not only earthly blessings, but eternal blessings because you have shown courage and determination. You've shown strength and wisdom. You've been attacked through envy. You've been attract, uh, assaulted through revenge. You've been ambushed by temptation aggravated by ingratitude, yet your faith, through your faith, you have prevailed. God has humbled your foes and made you fruitful. Amen. The text says Joseph was separate from his brothers, and that simply means he was set apart. He was discernibly different and distinguishable from his brother. His demeanor was not like his brothers who were ruthless and irresponsible. In contrast, he was faithful, he was trustworthy, he was loyal and dependable. His father could trust him with his wealth, Potiphar could trust him with his wife, and Pharaoh could trust him with his welfare and the welfare of Egypt. Joseph was responsible. In Genesis 37 and verse number 2, the Bible says, Joseph being 17 years old, and was tending the sheep of his father with the sons of Billah and the sons of Zilpah. And the Bible says, and Joseph brought unto his father uh, their evil report. You see, there is more here than meets the eye. The construction uh, here indicates that Joseph was in charge. He was the chief shepherd of his father's sheep. He was just 17 years old, yet he was able to handle the responsibilities that came with the job. Right. Joseph was wiser than his years would suggest. For one thing, Joseph feared God. And the Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. He also respected his father and his father's property. He respected his father's possession and his father's wealth. And that certainly could not be said about his brothers. The Bible says he gave his father their evil report. You know, one can only speculate just what their conduct consisted of, but whatever it was, it was evil. And some accuse Joseph of being a tattletale. But it's not tattling when you are accountable for the outcome. Huh? I wish I had somebody praying with me. Listen, shepherds must give account to the owner of the sheep for the welfare and well-being of every sheep in the fold. It's a matter of stewardship, and it is first required of a steward that he be found faithful. He was, he was, he was just a lad, but he had strength of character and strength of convictions. He had strength of convictions about what was right and what was wrong. And it would have been easy for him to just go along with whatever mischief his brothers were up to in order to get along. After all, they were older than he was. But he resisted and he refused to betray his father. 
I read in my Bible in Romans 12 and somewhere around verse 1 and 2, be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen, peer pressure is a real thing. But I stop by to tell you, you ought to be influenced more by your father's interest than by the interest of your peers. To be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. Joseph had a deportment and character that would ensure his survival and, his pres and, and not only his survival, but also the preservation of his father's interests. And I've come to tell you, preachers have to be like that. Elders have to be like that. They ought to carry themselves, not only preachers and elders, but every member, ought to carry yourself in such a way that God's flock and peculiar possession is always protected from threats from the outside as well as on the inside. His loyalty, his loyalty, that is Joseph's loyalty, uh, and, and also that of a shepherd, whether he be a ministering shepherd like I am or whether he be a shepherd like elders or shepherds, uh, his loyalty has to be to the owner of the sheep. And, of course, the ultimate owner is God. The book says the cattle on a thousand hills belong to God. And we need to understand that when we work on our jobs, we need to work as if we are working for the Lord, work to please him and not to please men or please ourselves. We would have less issues in our lives if we worked on our jobs like we were working for the Lord and not for Mr. Charlie. Come on, somebody. People will call you sucking up and brown-nosing, but I stop by to tell you, if you are a child of God, you've got to always look out for the interest of your father.